obviously our, our main aim is, is the white shark again we again want to have like the one line but we push to have those two smaller curtains here to not only detect the presence or absence because that's what basically a vr2 detect presence or absence of an animal but also the direction of the movement obviously that our p or to our kept up uh, Algoa Bay was, um, is uh, a very interesting, um, there's a lot of uh, different animals, there's uh, a lot of interest in this bay, there's uh, Matt and Malcolm, Malcolm there's uh, Sayab, there's Rhodes, there's OTN now, so a lot of people that are using the same technology. Now, it makes sense to, instead of having each little one working separately, but having all these <coughs> people working together to have a better, um, again, firepower, sorry Randy, if I use this word, but a better detection power, maybe it sounds much better, uh, more conservation-wise, um, <laughs> um, a better uh, detection power than uh, just having uh, your own little receivers. Um, then obviously another interesting point was uh, the port of Alfred in the, um, and as you can see there's some of the, as, sorry, as well here there are a few in the different estuaries, and here as well, few are an estuary here, and a river here, and obviously the uh, OTN uh, uh, line um, in Port uh, Alfred. Eastern Cape, uh, um, that is it's actually here. Yeah, there's not uh, an OTN line, but it's more. Uh, I think this one is those guys here and Sayab. And but again, it's not looking just a single project. It's looking at the whole uh, um, effort. Um, Sayab uh, collaborate uh, project between Sayab, OTN, um, um, <coughs> Sharks Board. And Jeremy talked about yesterday about this interesting uh, and quite complex to manage uh, site. Okay, there is uh, in Ponta. Uh, Ryan, this is the latest uh, one. Okay, yeah. and Ryan is going to talk about this one as well in Ponta in southern Mozambique, uh, and there is uh, as well uh, one uh, proposed uh, in. Uh, uh, southern Mozambique, just uh, south of Maputo Bay, and uh, <coughs> I think it, this is the same one, but anyway. Um, and I think uh, that's Simon, and, and, and you guys have uh, also up more north. So basically, we're covering in this, if we collaborate with each other, we're covering a, a stretch of coastline which is massive. Okay, again, I had to put uh, some underlines so just to remember, not to remember, to go through all the things that uh, Paul wanted to say. So, um, the, uh, what's, the, what's the job of ATAP? ATAP is um, function to maintain a national registry of transmitters, so which means uh, with the identification code for each transmitter, as well obviously the species, who, who put the transmitter, when put where the transmitter put, <coughs> how was put outside, uh, internally, externally, etc. Um, service all the deploy the units and maintain a registry of a receiver, and as well their soft time, because sometimes you put up a receiver and that's not always the next one to come down. So it's quite important to, uh, to know as well uh, the, um, the effort that you have, the listening effort that you have uh, at all the time. Now, this is, Paul asked me to explain it quite clearly now. I'm Italian, so I don't know whether I'm able to explain quite clearly, but I'm going to try. And this is a part of the bay that um, point. And, okay, so ADAP is, is, support, is um, um, aimed to um, download all the receiver and put all the data into a national database. Now, ODN is going to provide a platform to have this um, a national database basically created. This will all be all the initially to see how it runs in, in Canada, 
and then it would move uh, to South Africa. So it would become a South African national database created specifically and run by people that know, uh, created by people that know already these issues um, for South Africa to run those OTN <coughs> um, projects. Obviously, as well, is doesn't end here because also will be the uh, ATAP will be the link among the different um, scientists in the different parts. Because if you tag an animal in point A and the animal comes in point B, as we seen yesterday, that you guys found a shark that was uh, tagged by Jeremy, but you guys didn't. I mean, you didn't know yet, right? But this is something that I think we need to improve. The, as, uh, if there is uh, someone that is in charge to notify <coughs> as soon as possible, this is a big improvement in the ability of monitoring your data, how, your, your, uh, how the plan of your research is going. So it's, a, it's, it's very important that this part be as well. Again, collaboration. Oh, jeez, four. Um, okay, um, okay, it's a collaborative. <laughs> Marine Science Program managed as, um, by SciHub. Um, the receiver are maintained by SciHub uh, and uploaded and stored in a national database. The metadata is basically, it would be available to all the researchers, and I don't know where they decided on the term of pushing even further, but mostly will be species and who tag them, and who, ta who put that tag on that animal. That will be then in, uh, the researcher that tag that will be informed by the um, um, uh, other. Um, there's been uh, obviously, as I said, uh, OTN Canada provide the funding, capital investment for this project. But then to run this project, had to have a little kind of different um, different approach. Now. It couldn't be run only by one group, and therefore that was the idea of using the need of different research group in order to make this project feasible in running for many years. So the, obviously there was the NRF, um, um, NRF funding as well at the beginning of the development, but then several CIS Foundation, African Silicon Ecosystem Program, and there was another one that I'm forgetting. No, 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 no. And they were as well, they put money to, you know, change batteries, uh, put anti fouling, and on all the receivers. And, uh, and then it becomes also uh, an, e an effort, money wise, time wise, effort wise, by all the different groups that are bene benefiting from this. Project. So we have, as you can see, all, all the other groups. But obviously, this list could in, increase, uh, hopefully, will increase even further. Now, as Jeremy pointed out very well, this has the ability to look uh, not anymore at a single project, not anymore at a single species, but on a multi species, and even on an ecological level. This is very important. Just uh, <coughs> for example, mm, um, Ocean Research here with the University of Pretoria, we're trying to secure a postdoc uh, student to come and look at all this system in Mosel Bay at, from an ecological mo mo um, modeling ecologically. So looking at whales, dolphins, seals, uh, and fish and sharks that pass by. Um, I said that I was going to talk about a bit the marine side uh, more in detail. So how it works, there is um, 30 to 70 ki um, kilos uh, anchor, which you'll see later, um, a galvanized uh, um, chain with shackles. And then there is this little piece of equipment that in areas where visibility is poor, there's, you know, white sharks. The weather uh, or other sharks, there's, the weather is, uh, the sea conditions are not always um, nice to dive with, um, is a very important piece of equipment. Basically, you go more or less on top of this um, system and you press a button, the interrogator sends a signal to this acoustic release, which using electrolysis re uh, 
cut a little piece of wire down here. So the chain remains. A little bit of pollution, but you can see Mosel Bay is actually creating quite a nice reef, and you'll see actually uh, later, which is, is, is actually can be a side project as well, if you think uh, well, in terms of all the different areas, what kind of difference in terms of uh, the, what comes out from these chains, for example, could be a, also a project. Anyway, acoustic release and then the VR2 and, uh, and on top uh, one or two troll floats. Um, that actually uh, become quite a big uh, important point, I'll show you later. But anyway, so when the acoustic release uh, release the whole system, this is cut and the, this whole system is supposed to come out, supposed to come out. <laughs> Um, a dropping quite a nice system where you go toward the position, uh, you have already everything de deployed at sea and you just push a little bit this anchor chain there uh, and drops exactly at the position and uh, it's a very simple way to do it. We tried on the side of the boat and really besides breaking your back uh, it was really tough. So this is much better system. As you can see different kind of deployments as well, railway line, show later. And this is very nice visibility. We don't have always this kind of visibility. Um, yeah, the, the anchoring system we, we different places like huge double chain links, very huge, 70 gates. Um, thanks a donation from Petro SA here. Um, the Natasha boy <coughs> use a double anchor heads, uh, more or less 70 kilos uh, always also. 50 kilos are, are a railway line piece, which I think we're gonna move toward this thing. And um, I don't know who used 150 kilos. I'm, I'm very happy that I'm, it's not me. Because <laughs> <laughs> but there is also this option of use a concrete block. This I think was also uh, old, uh, um, I think uh, in the early days in the, uh, we used a big tire with concrete block and a, a pole. Again, that you had to dive uh, instead of this space. Okay, that's the, the theory. Now, in the real world, uh, is not happening always what you expect. Ellison told you yesterday that sometimes the species that you study uh, launch you a cur curve ball, you could define that, and does exactly what you don't want to do. What if instead the species that you, you're studying does that? What about if the equipment that you're using launch you that curve ball? Now, what if the equipment decided to move <laughs> so you go to the position, uh, I just find it funny this one, it's not very good. Um, you go into the position where you expect the thing to go and uh, the, the acoustic release is nice and it tells you also the distance from the, the, the receiver, and from the acoustic release. And you read the two miles and you're supposed to be on top of that thing. So two miles, uh, oh, wow. And you have a directional hydrophone, so you can't, it's not very easy to track, but obviously because we're good at tracking, we did it even then. <laughs> so anyway, what happened, a nice trawler decided to come a bit too inshore and picked up our receiver and dropped it two miles uh, away. Fortunately, the acoustic release has got a massive range, so that was quite good. But other thing that happened, what if um, the system that you're using to f for the float, it doesn't float. So you have, as you can see, we, we, we were faced with a, a, a quite a, a dilemma whether to carry on research or uh, making money and making, uh, make, uh, creating a muscle farm kind of uh, uh, business. <laughs> Obviously, we stayed with research. Um, but this is, uh, I mean, this is something that I think was six months, seven months time um, and came up. The float was barely... Um, so we went there and we pressed the thing and didn't come up. Stayed there for three hours, didn't come up. Came back the next day, didn't come up. So for two weeks, trying, we tried with the anchor, tried to pick it up, and nothing. So uh, I'm just saying this because it could be something that everyone might be interested. Um, so at the end, uh, I sent two of my expendable interns <laughs> <laughs> to dive down. <laughs> Uh, actually, not intense anymore. Uh, um, and um, and they dove down. And actually, Mike said, that, "Look, it, it looked like it was his body diver there because it was massive thing and it wasn't floating. So the the release worked perfectly. 
but it was lying on 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 the thing. And as you can see, this was a very beside the funny octopus. Yeah, <laughs> but it was very clean. So it's quite the, there's nothing here, but all the things was on the float. So the actually so the idea of having bigger float might not be a good idea. You have to test it again. Uh, I definitely not gonna use this. The, this was a float, two floats on this side. I'm not gonna use it anymore. So I talked to Paul. We're gonna use small ones, and work better. So, so obviously these are the challenges. So to pull it up, uh, those guys put a a, a, a rope on, on the on the receiver and. Because they dove about 36 meters, I, I couldn't task them. Okay, they're expendable, but not so much. So I couldn't task them to even pull it up. So I went basically from this side of the boat on my, on the, with a um, rope on my back to the other side about 30 times until I pulled this thing up. And conversely to what Paul is going to tell you, that muscles do not have any weight on, uh, on, uh, on water. I can tell you they have a massive weight on water. <laughs> At least in Mosel Bay, so maybe there's a different muscle. But. Anyway, so what's the solution of this one? As one of uh, our intern said, either, come on, it's supposed to be funny. Either you have me, either you have me on each of your boat, but it's not very feasible. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, Paul designed this other um, system, which is, is, is quite nice. Basically, he's using a copper sleeve that doesn't allow um, the growth on the part that actually is supposed to cut. Now, in case of the previous, in the case uh, like of the float not coming, that actually won't make too much of a difference because the acoustic release did this job. But anyway. I still, if you want me on the boat, this is uh, <laughs> anyway. Now going back, uh, serious. Um, what's the the nice thing of the TON as well as Tristan showed you? It can be mixed with other projects. It can be used at a multi-approach kind of uh, um, methodology. Now the research was already a collaborative project between uh, that made history in, 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 in Africa, I would say, in South Africa at least, but even around the world, where basically we tagged 39 white sharks, uh, different kind of tags. We, as Alison said, there's over 20 papers that could come out. There's uh, um, PhD, masters, honor studies, uh, even in the, for the future, that can come up from this project. Then we can combine, because obviously we put uh, um, Arco tags on, the, on, on those animals can be combined with the OTN. So this really is something that we, I hope we're going to see more and more, this kind of <coughs> collaboration. Now, if you are, uh, um, um, this is another example, uh, studying um, bull shark in, in South Africa, as you can see, is, uh, this is the distribution. And these are three places that can Sorry. Can, can collaborate uh, and use uh, this kind of platform to improve their, uh, the effectiveness of their studies. Now, um, I know that there's still a lot of, uh, um, uh, I hope that actually there was going to be a bit of deaf people as well and different, um, more of those uh, people along uh, South Africa, but, um, Southern Africa. But, and I know that there's a little bit of, uh, um, not, um, uh, how do you call it, a little bit of, uh, fe not fear, but almost fear, to consider that basically those guys, uh, Sayab, could, uh, um, to give this, collaborate and give this data and, and be part of this project under basically the OTN um, umbrella. That could, could be understandable, but if you look on the bigger picture, what you can achieve by collaborating, by having uh, SASC, uh, uh, SIAB, uh, um, uh, Sharks Board, uh, uh, all the people in Mozambique, uh, to put the effort together and really try to exp uh, answer questions globally and, or at least regionally, 
rather than on your little garden is, is going to be a massive advantage for everyone. So really I urge to think of the bigger picture rather than the each people interest. This is a, a classic example of good collaboration. Now, a come that can come out are amazing from this OTN initiative. There's a special ecology of iconic, on the, for the conservation, un, understanding special ecology of uh, several conservation iconic species, looking at environmental and biological factor that drive uh, um, the movement of different um, species, looking at uh, aband regional abundance, seasonality, looking also at the management <coughs> of overexploited fishery species, looking at shark, uh, sorry, uh, shark human um, interaction mitigation. This is a completely different kind of aspect, but very, very important. Um, looking at tourism species <coughs> like the mantas and whale shark. Um, uh, in the manner, gradually route between South Africa and Mozambique, multi uh, different countries that collaborate with each other for uh, better results. Um, climate change effects, uh, looking at how the temperature could rise, monitoring, because also the ODN has got little data loggers that uh, can tell you 24 <coughs> 7 the situation, uh, which could, is very interesting for a very project. Is, um, the temperature not only at the surface but also at different depth. Um, and also, as a matter of, of pride, this really uh, another, is another kind of collaborative project that puts South Africa in viewed internationally as a success. Um, it will be showcased um, at the second uh, international system for. Uh, I can't remember, but the uh, Fish Biotelemetry Conference. Um, and as I told you, ye uh, yes, it's going to happen in July. And it's really going to be portrayed as a success. And it can improve even further uh, in the next years. So I really, yeah, urge uh, you guys to think about being part of this project. And I think that's it. Thank you.